Welcome to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. I'm Linda Karnauskas, and I want to thank you for joining us on this Friday, August 5th. We have an informative show for you today. First, we'll be here in the studio visiting with Sheriff Lon Teeley, and we'll be talking all about active violence and threat strategies. And then we'll be on location at the Oatana Art Center with artist Lynette Yencho, and we're going to talk about her mural. Um, at this time, it's a special day on Friday when we always give special recognition to our sponsors. The Oatana Today Show thanks the following sponsors of this program. Our premier sponsors are City of Oatana, Express Employment Professionals, Oatana Public Utilities. Our, our primary sponsors are Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Anytime Fitness, Fairway Foods, Little Theater of Oatana, and Oatana Foundation. Our interlude sponsors are Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Glenn Mager and Michael Mager of the Brick Mager Funeral Home and Medford Funeral Home, Carlson Branstead and Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care, Owatonna Business Incubator, Sign Pro and Auto Trim Design, Steel County Historical Society, Steel County Transitional Housing, The Third Hand Video Productions, Tri-M Graphics and TPS Insurance. And we hope you will support these fine Oatana businesses that support the Oatana Today Show. Uh, please say thanks to them when you see them out and about because without them, the show couldn't continue. And we're always looking for sponsors so, of this show. So if you are a business and you would like more information about becoming a sponsor of the Oatana Today Show, please contact our show's producer, Leanne Alt, at 390-5751. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with Sheriff Lon Teeley. So please stay with us. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar, aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Oatana Public. A voice you can talk to We're growing with you With you in mind And everything we do Oh, a ton of public utilities Greetings from the Steele County Historical Society. We invite you to visit us and enjoy your county's history at the History Center and Village of Yesteryear. Check our website for current exhibits and monthly programs. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And we're here visiting with Sheriff uh, Lon Teeley. Hi, Sheriff. Hello. Good morning. Thank you for taking a time and coming into the studio to talk about active violence strategies. Oh, absolutely. My, my pleasure to help out. Yeah. It's, it's sad to have to talk about active violence strategies, but unfortunately, we have to keep people safe, correct? Yes. Unfortunately, the times have changed. Yeah. Why don't you share a little bit about yourself with our viewers and your role as sheriff? Oh, uh, my name, uh, obviously, is Lon Teeley. I'm your sheriff. Um, been in law enforcement a little more than 26 years now, and and uh, the sheriff's office is uh, comprised of several different organizations or de uh, department areas in regards to from the law enforcement center, the detention center, the civil process area, um, investigations and patrolling. So there's a whole lot of everything into the sheriff's office and public relations. Public relations coming on the Oatana Today yes, Show. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> letting everyone know yeah. uh, what to do in certain aspects and, and, of life. And you right? have to be ready to be out there and be a people person. Yeah, and, and smile and be, yes, be nice. Yes, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, we do have to talk about the violence, uh, active violence strategies today. Um, Lon, can you tell me what, what does that look like? What is an active violence situation that we should really put our antennas up and be aware of? Well, your active violence areas such as Columbine or, or the post office shootings of way back or uh, something that happens in whatever school or mall area, I mean, things like that have, are a good example of active violence. Mm -hmm. It isn't always going to result in a shooting, though, will it? Will it? No, it, it doesn't. It could, be, it could be some kind of chemical or it could be some kind of a threat, a verbal threat, or even a physical altercation. Mm -hmm. 
So in the, what environments do these type of acts of violence take place? Could you give some examples of, of where you would think th these type of things would happen? Oh, it, it could happen anywhere. And, and like I said, mentioned earlier, the movie theaters or even a restaurant. Uh, I know quite a few years ago some officers were sitting down in another uh, state. They were sitting down for a break, and unfortunately uh, somebody came in and, and uh, shot them. And it was just, they were just taking their morning coffee break, mm -hmm. and it just happened. So mm -hmm. we have to be more prepared and more aware of our surroundings wherever we're at now. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it, this all changed with 9-11? I think this was prior to 9-11. It, it, it's just been getting more publicity and more, uh, more awareness of what is actually going on. Mm -hmm. I know in 9-11... If you flew after 9-11, there were certain precautions that in an airport you should take. One of the main things they tell you, and I haven't flown in some time, I don't know, I, I think they're still telling you this. D if you see a package or a suitcase just laying there, don't touch it. Go, well, get, go get some. Yeah, don't touch anything. TSA is, is your security mm -hmm. uh, people at the airlines in. And you hear the intercoms all the time where they're saying, uh, has anybody touched your luggage or has anybody mm -hmm. left anything behind? I mean, contact this for suspicious package. So they have already been doing it. And it's just a matter of, unfortunately, our times have changed to where we have to be more, uh, um, more ready mm -hmm. than we've ever had been before. Now, if you're in a mall, a shopping situation or a bus station or even um, in a restaurant somewhere, and you notice a suitcase or a big package, what would your recommendation be? I guess that depends on if I walked in and it was there or if I was sitting there and somebody left it behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, are you able to give me some information? Because without having a lot of information is how it would play it, the next role on what you can do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when you're walking in a building, whether it's a meeting, a restaurant, what are some general um, awareness tactics you could give us to protect ourselves? Well, I'll give you simple ones that uh, law enforcement use, and, and everybody knows this, is when we walk in, we find ourselves with our back against the wall, and that's not a bad thing. That's just so we can see everything. And it's, a, it's our best visual, and so we're there taking our break, but we're also there watching out for everyone else taking their break. So you're watching other people, and you, you see a wide scope of the restaurant. You basically see it from wall to wall, most likely. If you're yes. here in Oatana, most likely, yes. anyway. And so you sit there, and what else are you looking at? Well, just type of behavior or anybody coming in with uh, suspicious activity or if people are just, I mean, it doesn't have to be an act of anything. It's just people come in and do whatever they need to. And mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a restaurant or if it's an airline or wherever it is, it's, we just keep an eye on people and mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what we're trained to do. Well, it's, we all vacation in the summer, especially What's here, that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here in Minnesota <laughs> and you, you know, we use hotels. And it used, you, when you walk in a hotel, they always t know your route, know how to get out of the building. Would you say that's kind of a blanket, a blanket request that you should know that now? In any well, case? not only is it their insurance policy coverage, yeah. I'm sure, but uh, yeah, when, and it's always labeled on the back end of your uh, hotel doors so on the reverse mm -hmm. side of it. But yeah, you should know which way you need to uh, escape, if you will, mm -hmm. evacuate. Mm -hmm. um, like a fire scene, you're evacuating. If it's a shooting air, a hostile situation, you need to escape. And you need to know when to uh, get out of the area and mm -hmm. how to get out of the area. Mm -hmm. So what would be your first and foremost advice to anyone if you're in an area and an individual escalates to the point where you're, you feel threatened? Leave. If you have an opportunity to leave, and then while you're leaving and, and getting to your safe area, um, notify the proper authorities. That way we can get in route and, you know, we have the best intel because you were just there. And as you're contacting the proper authorities, we're getting the information of what was going on too. Mm -hmm. Say this individual blockade blocks the main entrance, then what? Everybody has a cell phone nowadays. And depending on the situation, depending on the hostile environment, call and we'll get there. Okay. Could you uh, also talk about what businesses need to do to react to active Violent oh, strategies. sure, sure. I think all businesses should have some kind of a threat advisory team, kind of like they have a first aid team or somebody that's ready for CPR or ADs or whatever. It, you should have a threat advisory team to where 
if an employee sees another employee acting suspicious or talking something bad, they can approach this team and let them know, and then that team could continue from there because that team's going to be the one that's more trained than the person that, or the regular employee in most cases. So that team would be trained to discern, maybe interview this person or somebody. Either interview or look at certain areas of concern. And what I mean by that is, is the person making any kind of comments? Is that person acting suspicious or caring anything different than they usually do? If I'm working at a, at a movie theater and I'm bringing in a bunch of backpacks or suitcases that you don't need to at a movie theater. You know, it, it's something that mm -hmm. uh, you just be aware of more mm -hmm. items. You know, that's a key word I hear you saying is awareness. Um, in this world, we can't be anywhere, whether it is a movie show lobby or out on the street where somebody's wearing head headsets or on their cell phones. So would that be, and they're not necessarily aware. You need to be aware. We'll stress that, aware. You, okay. know, you need to and be so that. We're in a situation that, that gets aggressive. So your main, your main directive would be get away. Yes, absolutely. And what happens if we can't get away and this person's coming at us? What would, you, what the, would be the Once next? again, depending on the situation, uh, I'd fight. And if you can't fight, then you find yourself a safe area and do what you can to remain safe until we can get there and, and uh, take over the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, and that's what, whether you're traveling here or anywhere. Well, it's you, just, like I said, it, it depends on the situation. So you need to know when to say when. Okay, so I don't want to put people in harm's way. I want to make sure that people understand that they can, if they have to, just let the person uh, say what needs to be said and, and we'll go from there. Okay. And the police, the, the police or sheriff or whomever you call, if you said, look, I don't know if this is anything, but this is what's going on, and say this person's just having a really bad day, they would come in and, and um, take, remove this person if they could. And, and yeah, we'll have negotiations. We'll have some kind of way of uh, interacting to where we can hopefully uh, resolve this to a safe manner. Do you find that that's happening more and more in different areas? Are people becoming more aware? I think they're becoming more aware, but I think it's publicizing more too. And do they? Are you? Do you get many calls on that that avenue? Or uh, we'll just leave that alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay, but just uh, just be in tune with your surroundings. Yes, absolutely. Know. Be around. Be surrounded. Okay, great. Well, we we thank you uh, for coming and help coaching us through what to do in these situations. We appreciate all you do. Thank you. Okay. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be on location down at the Oatana Arts Center, so please stay with us. Looking for that perfect birthday party idea for your child? I have exactly what you're looking for, a pool or gym party at the West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center. Hi, this is Brad. Contact me today at 774-7102 to schedule the party every child will love. Birthday party packages are available year round. West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center, encouraging and promoting a healthy lifestyle. Hello, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Michael Mager with the Brick Mager Funeral Home and the Medford Funeral Home. At Brick Mager, we are privileged to have served the families of Steele County community for 118 years. Whether you choose traditional burial or cremation, we promise the tribute your loved one deserve with the peace of mind that you require. We are proud to be part of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Oatana Foundation. Your generosity has made Oatana a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Oatana Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. 
Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. As you can see, we're on location at the Oatana Art Center, and we're viewing the work of Lynette Yancho, our artist, that's responsible for this beautiful mural. And we want to thank you for taking the time to visit with us today. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> Lynette, why don't you share with our viewers uh, a little bit about who you are and where you're from and your experience? Okay, I um, grew up in Oatana. I went to Oatana High School, and Barney Anderson uh, was my art teacher then, amongst, among a few others, uh, but Barney what kind of held true as uh, the big one. He taught me how to draw, and that seemed to be the most important thing, because drawing was the foundation of everything else I did in my career. Um, I decided, or I started working at Justin's when I was 16. Um, there's an awful lot of artists in this town at that time, and most of them were wildlife painters. Um, and my wildlife is a little bit different than theirs, but... Um, would, you, would, yeah. you, would you say now that you've you know, been an artist for a while, would you say that you had some talent in your younger years? Yeah, a, I did. A recognizable yeah. talent. Yeah. And so did you want to develop that talent? Actually, I wanted to be a ballerina. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was showing during round puberty, it was showing that maybe I wasn't uh, of that mold. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> so, um, you just knew you wanted to stay in the arts, right? Yeah, I wanted to stay in the arts. <laughs> but. Uh, being a dancer also gave me a lot of leverage in uh, drawing and painting people and action poses and uh, feeling uh -huh. what you're drawing because I knew how it feel or what it felt like to do an arabesque and that really um, plays off in, in the work. Did you go on to college then and, and as an art artist major? Um, f first I went to vocational school. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a very practical people in this town. And we, <laughs> um, a vocational school, I studied commercial art. And I, to this day, will you know, just kind of uh, claim to be a commercial artist. Okay. And that is somebody that's kind of like if you're a musician, you're a studio musician, mm -hmm. uh, you want to play these little ditties for this commercial or you want to play the backup for, um, you know, a, a big band or something, you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of get skills in every direction and you um, focus on uh, marketing mm -hmm. and you listen to a lot of marketing people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I kind of worked in that area, went back to Justin's, went up to the cities. I, I really got tired of Justin's fast because it didn't mm -hmm. quite have the excitement that I needed. I went to the cities and I, <laughs> speaking of interesting jobs, I became an art director for Llewellyn Publications, which is an astrology and occult publishing house. Mm -hmm. And we got to know a lot of people in that area. Um, just got experience through different different yep. areas that you went to and then you just how did you learn about what mediums work with with what uh, artwork you know did you how did you learn about oil versus acrylic those type of things oh just by experience okay. just keep going okay. you know um, I would feel like painting with oil mm -hmm. paintings today and I would mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, I, I would go, I'd read books, um, mm -hmm. study particular artists that I like and how they did their work. You know, mm -hmm. I was telling you about Maxfield Parrish mm -hmm. and his layers Correct. of translucent yeah. colors that where the light would bounce between them. And um, you're very, very, you're very, very talented. Uh, in talking about this particular mural, how did this get started? Well, Sylvan, um, I moved back to Oatana back in 2006, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple of years after that, Sylvan uh, found this uh, grant, and he thought he would like to see a mural painted up on the ceiling here. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking at it, I thought, well, you know, I'm not real big on sharp lines, so 
I would have some vines in here, maybe I'd ca cascade them down the wall, you know, and, mm -hmm. and he thought that was a great idea. Then we thought, well, we should do panels so I can do them at home, you know. Mm -hmm. My back is a little bit less than mm -hmm. it used to be, and so um, we, we may, had these panels made. Uh, Les Abraham designed them, and uh, once uh, we put those together, um, mm -hmm. Took them down. We took them to my studio, mm -hmm. um, and so the the process began. What is your inspiration uh, as an artist to come up with this idea? What process? What's your inspirational process? I mean, you're looking at these panels, and they're all blank. So well, what? that's the interesting part because Sylvan said, "You do anything you want to." <laughs> I know we're going to. Oh love boy! It. Yeah, you do anything you want. And you know that can be. Uh, uh, Good thing. That's, yeah, that's what every artist wants to hear. But then once you hear it, you you kind of go, "Oh my God, <laughs> that's a lot of, a lot of blank space that needs to be filled." Yeah. And I can't just uh, do void areas very well, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. But, um, no, I started with, well, what would people in Owatonna like to see? And then I thought of what would um, represent the art center. And then I thought of, uh, you know, well, the art center is um, right. education, you know, right. uh, a chance to learn about mediums and, and art and uh, try your own hand, mm -hmm. a, a place to do it. Um, and a place to show it, and I've shown at least five times here. And what, what and medium did you use on these panel? Oh. This is all acrylic on masonite. Okay, and you prefer acrylics. Yes, I do. Uh, could you just state why? Well, it's a modern day uh, paint. Mm -hmm. I do love oils as well, that mm -hmm. or, you know, organic uh, thing that you have with oils. and, mm -hmm. and you, the colors are so rich, but you know, the acrylics have emulated those rich colors, you know, in the past uh, 20, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And there's so many mediums you can put into acrylics to bulk them up and mm. make them thicker, make them thinner. I can put them in airbrush, I can... When I look at this mural, it's very whimsical and fun. I mean, I could sit, stand here for an hour looking at all the different things, maybe more. Do you, do you consider your artistry to be whimsical? Uh, it comes yes, across very much. that way. Very much. And why do you suppose that's a, a, a trait that you have in your work? Um, I don't know. I guess that's, <laughs> that's who I am. I'm a kidder. Uh -huh. um, it worked very well in a lot of my uh, commercial work because mm -hmm. we do have to think of uh, things to do for like commercial mm -hmm. you know uh, whatever it is right and your your choices of colors is just remarkable and a lot a lot of fun and there's Thank a you. little there is personality of Oatana in this room plus what happens in here wouldn't, wouldn't you say yeah I hope so yeah how has uh, this project changed you as an artist Oh dear. Well, in the first place, I, you know, when I was looking at this as a, a mural that, you know, I'm going to do for others, you know, for everybody else in Owatonna, in the Art Center, you know, people I know, people I love. Uh, I started, as I started coming down the walls, because I finished the, the ceiling, I started coming down on the walls I started getting even more whimsical with some of these little whirlies that go on, mm -hmm. and some of this stuff. I don't remember conscientiously painting that guy, but I did, you know? <laughs> oh, wow, really? And, yeah, it was like I was in some kind of space zone or something, and I'm thinking, um, <laughs> I'm going to start painting some more like that, and it, it might not even be recognizable, but I'm looking forward to it, and it's not going to be for anybody. <laughs> so would you say after all these years learning, you know, all the th things that are involved in artistry and being in touch with what your inspiration is, would you state that maybe one of the things you rediscovered or had discovered even more was your whimsical side in, oh, in yeah. this project? Yeah. 
And has that, has that uh, motivated you to maybe do more in that area? Yeah, uh, uh, life is a journey, uh -huh. you know, and um, so I've done this kind of thing so far. Uh, it's time to do something else. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 okay, so do you have any idea what that would be? <laughs> it, well, it might be painting. It might go into 3D again. Okay. And, All right. You know. Okay, great. We'll see. And there, and you do have a little website out there. Someone could I look do. you up. And great. Go ahead. LynetteStudio.com. Okay. Thank you, Lynette. It's been a pleasure. Come on over to the Art Center and look at the mural. It's just wonderful. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. We hope you enjoyed visiting down at the Oatana Art Center with artist Lynette Yencho. Well, it's that time in the week when we share what's going on in our community. Anyone wishing to apply for work at one of the Steele County Free Fair vendors should stop into the fair office and register your name. Vendors will contact you directly. Habitat for Humanity of Steele Wadsika area will break ground on the organization's 24th home on Saturday, August 6th at 10 a.m. The ceremony will take place at the site of the family's new home, 603 Glendale Street, Noatana. This is a rescheduled date due to a rain cancellation in July. Habitat for Humanity invites anyone interested in volunteering with the organization to email volunteer at habitatwa.org or call the office at 507-446-0112 to get started. The Oatana Arts Center will open an exhibition of paintings by Kevin Erke on Sunday, August 7th. There will be a reception for the Lurkey on Sunday, August 14th from 1 to 5 p.m. The public is invited to meet the artist and view his work and have a refreshment. H. Peter Baxter of Oatana and Barb Moratz of Ellendale have been named as this year's Steele County Senior Citizens of the Year for 2016. They will be honored by the Steele County Exchange Club and the Steele County Free Fair on Thursday night, August 18th at 6.30 p.m. in Square Park. And the River Bend Nature Center invites you to join their growing rain garden care crew on Tuesday, August 9th. Interested individuals will meet from 4 to 5 p.m. and do maintenance on the rain garden. Well, that's all we have for you today. And we hope you will join us on Monday when our guests will be the Steele County Gem and Mineral Club. And then we'll be visiting the Salva uh, with the ladies from the Salvation Army with Shop with a Cop and get some other, uh, some other updates. So until then, have a great weekend and we will see you on Monday.